a king and priest to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. By the power of the blood. Yes. That blood has brought us in to his holiness so clean. Yes. Where there's death to self and sin. Yes. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Let me tell you something folks. All this stuff everybody's trying to do. If they'll just get in what we're preaching about the Lord. Would they? <laughs> The truth is, can't nobody do it. But the Spirit of God takes care of all of it. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Raise your hands and let's worship Him a little bit. Hallelujah. We've passed on it through the courtyard in the holy place we stand. Glory to God. We have passed into the courtyard in the whole we stand we are viewing now the holy of holies to be there is our plan <laughs> we have to know the way so as we do just speak more clearly hallelujah so we hear each word you say. And as we stand here in this holy place, with our lamps all trimmed and clean, there is food upon the table any time that we can eat. But there is no place to sit down. Hallelujah. For we must keep pressing on for this way into the most holy place is a straight and a perfect wall. And in this most holy place of God, the anointing
raining, it's raining once again. Deliver us from that that has made the word of no effect. And open our eyes tonight and let us see into a higher dimension of the glory and of the spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost and fire falling on all men. Do you realize when Peter said prophesying Joel's prophecy had come to pass in the last days? That the literal interpretation of that means the last of the last. Yes. Praise God. That means it only begun with what Peter said. But here we stand in the last of the last. Amen. Amen. We are they upon whom the end of the age have come. And Hebrews tells us we have tasted of the powers of the world to come. That's why you can't be satisfied with all this little symbol religion that they're trying to hold. I don't know how they do it, but they hold thousands of people at bay with a thimble full of talk. But how many know we're coming on an hour when it's going to take a manifestation of the power and the glory? Do you realize it'll get to the point it don't even matter if we say anything or not. We'll just get up. And when we get up, the Holy Ghost in us is going to come out. Shana Mahaya is going to get up. And people around us are going to fall like wood all the way around us. Because when we stood up, somebody greater than us stood up on the inside of us. And the waves of glory emanating from that life within caused a harvest. Hallelujah! Caused a harvest. Can you say praise the Lord? Well, you may be seated tonight. How wonderful the Lord has been to us today. 
What a glorious meeting this morning. I told the brethren we was coming out the door and talking about the message. I said, you can't preach like that at will. You have to you have to be anointed to get in that. Because those are things so deep you can't figure out with your carnal mind. You can't ponder them unless you're in the spirit. The worst thing you can do is try to ponder them when you're in the carnal realm because none of it will make sense. But when you're in the Spirit, everything starts getting clear. Yes. All the fog lifts. Amen. All the old hazy. Yes. Come on now. Look that you've had gets out of the way and the Holy Ghost starts clearing Amen. some things up. That's the reason you can ride to church and talk about something all the way here and the man or woman of God will get up and tell everything you talked about in the car because the Lord is clearing up the haze. Hallelujah. Whoa, I feel the glory. Praise God. Sister Corey sent text in right before church and asked us to have prayer for her and her husband. They need a touch and a good shout of victory in their life tonight. Let us agree together. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out the Holy Ghost hand and move for them tonight. Lord, even now, as we bind our hearts and faith together. Let a note of victory come up in their spirits right now. Oh Jesus, we pray for a lifting up of the both of them in the name of the Lord. Raise them up in every area. Lift them up to the higher ground. Put their feet on solid ground tonight and let them feel victory, victory, victory in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let them report in that God has touched them both. Amen. Give them what they need. Touch them where they need touching right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we call it done by the faith of the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's so good. Isla told me when I was coming up that they've cut Benji and Oxygen back to 30%. Now that's hard now on none at all. And it won't probably by tomorrow he'll come off of that thing. They're waiting on a bed in a lower unit to move him to now. So he don't so he's not having to have 24 hour care like he was. And then if he can get to one more bed, he'll probably go home. Praise the Lord. And he wants to come home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll have to get Sister Isla to tell you how she stood on that because the doctor tried to tell her, don't be surprised if something bad happens with it. She said, how about you don't be surprised if he comes up off that bed, amen, if you see him raised up out of there. And he wanted her to believe that it was going to be a long, lengthy process and it ain't been what for two days three days two days and god's already about to bring him home from the heart and aren't you glad for jesus tonight praise god there comes sister poor and her husband we just finished praying for you god we're glad you made it in tonight praise the lord so that's how fast god took care of that i mean didn't take a week didn't take 10 days it didn't take 30 days. Now I went in, Heather and I went in Friday morning. He went in Thursday night. We went in Friday morning. And when I carried him in, he was on 70-something percent what his oxygen uh, they had level. And 100 percent. When we got in there, his, his oxygen number had come up to 97. God, that's almost perfect. Hallelujah. Yeah, and that was by one day's yeah. time. And so God just... She just stood and wouldn't let them push her around. And that's how you do it. We was talking about that this morning. You don't have any conversation with any other voice except the voice of your father. And we're going to get into some of that deeper because I believe God wanted me to come in here and kind of put a cap on what I brought to you this morning. How many know we was in the spirit? God was talking to us this morning. You were not designed to be in a war all the time between your soul and spirit. You were designed to experience soul prosperity. Soul healing. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. And so thank God for His Word. We're getting ready to give to the Lord tonight before we go into the Word. And I wanted to bring something before you. We're, we're, uh, we'll be through with the room this week. 
in the fellowship hall and we decided to convert over from long tables to six foot rounds. Uh, the ladies uh, uh, are going to have an easier get in and out of. Of course, we will too when we're eating because we can just walk around through and all that. Anyway, uh, those tables going to run us about $114 a piece. The Lord moved during lunch today yes. and five people bought a table. Hallelujah. All we need is three more. So if the Lord speaks to you and you want to give on that, just put some money in something or on your check right table and we'll have three more bought and that'll be it. But isn't that wonderful? We're just sitting there talking about it and the Holy Ghost yes. just took over. And somebody said, I'll buy one, I'll buy one, I'll buy four, but three, we had five of them yes. already bought. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, do you think the Lord wants us to have those ten? Well, I don't know why five people didn't pay for them and just leave us three to buy if he didn't. I tell you what he done. I made the statement. It was my statement. And I should have watched how I talked. I said, I guess we'll just put our old ones in there till we get something new. And the Lord didn't like me saying that. He interrupted what I said. He did. And somebody said, no, I'm buying one right now. And somebody else said, I'm buying one. And somebody else said, I'm buying one. And I said, well, if you'll wait a minute, I'll buy one. And by the time it over, it was five. It's hallelujah. So you're going to get one. All right. You're getting one. Shh, look at that. Now we just need one to got it. There's the third one. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, glory. That's done. The Lord don't want us fixing that room up and putting old tables in there, I guess. Praise the Lord. Thank you all so very much. Bless you for that. And just come tonight, would you, and worship the Lord in your giving. Amen.
Hallelujah. I'll wait a few more moments on you. Praise God. Just give me an amen as you get it. All right. Okay. We all about there? One verse we want to read that. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the what? Precious fruit of the earth. Hallelujah. How many of you believe we're that precious fruit yeah, of the earth? And he hath long patience for it until he what? Received the early and the latter rain. Now, I don't have to tell you, you should know this here in this congregation, but you realize if we go back to the book of Joel, we won't turn there, I'll just paraphrase from there. But if we go back to the book of Joel, and we know that the book of Joel is the whole book of end time restoration, end time revival, end time movement of the Lord, God's army loosed in this earth with power and with anointing to restore that. Glory to God, which the canker worm and the pommel worm and the locust hath eaten. You remember the Bible said that which one hath left the other and has devoured it? But he said, blow the trumpet in sign and call a solemn assembly and sanctify a fast. Glory to God. And let the priests weep between the porch and the altar and let them rend their garments and not their hearts. And then he says, after such a time of intercession. Now how many realize that just in recent times the Lord hath put us in a time of intercession like we've not been in in a while. I mean we've been, how many has been in under a heavy intercession in your prayer life? God has had you birthing things in the Spirit. How many of you realize you're anointed to give birth to the supernatural in this hour and in this day? And we've been teaching how we're like those Hebrew women that said by the time the midwife got there, they were already delivered. Even though there was pain and even though it was hardship, they pushed right through it. Amen. And they gave birth to that which was supernatural. And how many realize that the church is the bride of God and that He has carried her into a worship place of deep intimacy with the Lord. And we have conceived in our spirit something heavenly, something holy, something divine, something that this world is crying out for. And the whole earth is growing right now for the manifestation of the what? Sons of God. Hallelujah. I was teaching you this morning about the man-child gospel, the man-child company, how this woman, this church, this beloved of God, this one who's been in the secret place with the Most High and has a has, has boat under the shadow of the Almighty, what's she getting ready to do? Give birth not to an infant, not to something that's not been formed yet. Paul said, my little children of whom I travail again in birth, not to Christ be born in you, but until Christ be what? Born in you. And how many believe that ever since you've been born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost, God has been forming within you something mighty, something wonderful that is a, a, a prophesied to come forth and to be birthed in an acceptable time and in a time appointed of the Father. And here the Lord said, be patient, be persistent, don't stop looking for it, don't stop believing for it. Don't give up because the husbandman hath long patience as he waits for the fruit of the earth because, and then he goes back to something that said in Joel, he's going to receive of the early and the latter. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now the former reign which began in Peter's prophecy on the day of Pentecost, Joel prophesied about it. What was promised to happen in the coming in of that former reign? Everybody shout restoration. restoration. He said after that, priests weeped and got the people to intercede. He said it'll come to pass. And what did he start doing? He started describing God's army. 
He prophesied to us that a people would be raised up in this earth so mighty and so strong and so swift that when they went, their feet would sound like horses running on the my God. He said we'd leap over walls. We'd rush over cities. Uh, he said that we would go, amen, with a vengeance and a fire with an anointing. My God, how many know he's not talking about literal swords and literal fire, but he's talking about the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost being in the church. And he said, everywhere we walk glory to God everything we leave behind amen will be, 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 be like a desolate winter, but then before us will be what Eden it'll be like Eden what was we preaching on this morning when that man was in that beginning in Eden amen the kingdom of God was manifested on this earth and man did not war in his mind and he did war in his soul and God is bringing us to a place in him where we are having things that have been known in the supernatural awaken glory to God our senses which have been dull are becoming sharp and keen because we are the spirit is moving to the forefront and it's taken over this temple and the temple is being filled with the glory of the Lord hallelujah well I feel like running a while tonight I don't know what you're believing in and preaching. You may be preaching that it's going to get worse and worse uh, and everybody's failing. I'm preaching it ain't even got just now getting started on the goodness of God and what God has planned for this church. There's an army rising up. Those dead bones are going to live again. Hallelujah. Somebody tell me what raises up dead bones. Is it not prophecy? How many believe that God is restoring a prophetic word to the body of Christ? The former rain, but he didn't just say the former rain. He said the latter rain. Hallelujah. Now many know that for we had a series, a period of time in the church ages. It was called the Dark Ages. And the Romans ruled the roost. And they only spoke Latin. And the Bible was chained up in the in the uh, chapel so that man could not read the Word of God for himself. Come on now. And Martin Luther was climbing up those steps where they said Jesus walked. Huh? He was climbing up them, doing penance, earning his way. And while he was climbing up them, the Lord supernaturally spoke to him and said that Jesus had never walked on those steps and that that was a man-made thing. And God sent him home to study his Bible all night and he turned and read, where the just shall live by faith. And he wrote his thesis. Come on. And he went and nailed it. Oh, praise God. To the church at Edinburgh in Wittenberg, Germany. And he made his he made his thesis and made his public stand that every man was a priest. Come on now. Over his own soul and over his own house. And God started, what's that period of time known as? The Reformation. God started to reform this thing. He started to bring it back into, oh, praise the name of the Lord. I feel like shouting tonight. He started to bring it back into where it was supposed to be. Make no mistake about it. God's idea has never been to cut it off, stop it, move it out, go away with it. His plan from the beginning has been to bring this thing back full circle to the way it was in the beginning of that beautiful garden where it was life everlasting. Amen and where man lies for nothing. Hallelujah. You weren't designed to suffer. You weren't designed to get sick. You weren't designed for poverty. You weren't designed to be spiritually dead and dry. You were designed to manifest the life of God. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord. Amen. Well, hallelujah. And then from the Reformation came the uh, Methodism or the Methodist. And they brought in holiness. And then came the Nazarenes came in and brought in holiness. Uh, and, and then uh, 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 the Baptist folks came along with a priesthood message and brought in another part of it. And then thank God, in the early 1900s, hallelujah, glory to God, old brother Parham came to the Midwest. Uh, they lived in Texas for several years, him and a group of students, and lived off of raw turnips uh, until they got enough of money to move to Topeka, Kansas, where they rented an abandoned mansion called Stone's Folly, and they moved into that house and began 
a Bible school and some of the students came and asked Brother Parham, is this Acts 2 and 4 for today or is it already passed? He said, I don't think it's for today, but don't take my word for it. Get up there and pray and ask God to show you. And they went, they had a prayer room on top of that mansion that they called the upper room. And they went up on that top and began to pray and seek the Lord. And them little young people got baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. In 1904 and 6, they began to speak in other tongues. And Brother Parham was up teaching and had not yet received the experience. And while he was teaching, he began to get weak. And his tongue began to get thick in his mouth. And he asked everybody to stop and pray for it because he thought something was happening to it. And he fell to his knees. But in but a few seconds, his tongue released and he began to speak in an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. Everybody said restoration. God brought that to pass. And then that was in the middle of the United States. On the east coast of the United States. Oh, praise the Lord. In the mountains and hills of North Carolina, a man named A.J. Tomlinson birthed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then all the way in the west coast, in California, Los Angeles, uh, Brother Seymour, Daddy Seymour, who was blind in one eye. Amen. He was a black brother. And he went and Brother Parham's school in that day was segregated. And you couldn't get in. And he sat outside the door and listened to him get the Holy Ghost and teach on the Holy Ghost. And he went back to Azusa Street and moved in an old stable and cleaned it out. And the Azusa Street revival began and swept this whole country. That's in the middle and on both sides. God birthed. Pentecost in this nation. Amen. And restoration came. Yes. Hallelujah. Everybody say early rain. Early. Well, let me tell you something. After a few years, when at the time the early 40s got here, man had got into the picture. Man got into the Azusa Street revival. They began to argue over doctrinal issues. And it split. And denominations began to form in the Pentecostal circles. This group said, we believe this way. That group said, we believe this way. The other group said, we're going to take our bat and ball and go on over here. Come on now. And they got so dead that there were no gifts in the church. And nobody was laying on hands. And nobody was prophesying. Are you listening? Hallelujah. And thank God there's a group of men who got together. Some of them were from Canada. The hallelujah. Men like George Halton, Bill Britton, George Warnock, they all got around the table and began to discuss. Hallelujah. And out of that discussion, God began to move. And He birthed what we know as the latter rain. Come on now. In 1948, that latter rain moved hit right wide open. And men began to get the Holy Ghost again. And they began to lay hands on the sick again. And they began to prophesy again. And they began to see the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Ghost again. Say the word restoration again. That's what God's plan has been from the beginning. Is to restore not just what they ate, but the years. How many of you tonight have had years of heartache and sorrow and you're believing God to not just restore things, but to restore the years to you? You. He didn't just say they ate up things. He said they ate up years. They wasted time. It was time gone by when something better should have went on. Don't be mourn those days. God is getting ready to give back to the church the years. Woo, that's a prophetic word for somebody to lay hold of in this house tonight. God is prophesying to you by the Holy Ghost and telling you some of you are going to get back the years that this has cost you. Not just a day or a week, not just a month or a season, but He's going to give back the years. Woo, the years. All them years you wept, all them years you cried, all them years you tried to get by, all them years you didn't think you was going to make it. God is getting ready to restore unto you the years. 
Everybody claim the years right now. Just stop in this message. Raise your hands up and declare that there's a restoration of the years coming to your life. Oh, come on, Shandala Mahaya, Rakabakoya Mahanda. You folk that are watching us live right there in your home, raise your hands right now and declare God is giving me back the years of sorrow that I've gone through. The years of heartache. Idama Shata. Do you understand that the church, these things I'm preaching to you about, happened over a course of many what? Years. 1948, something else happened. About 49, the Spirit of the Lord gave birth to another move. It was called the voice of healing. The voice of healing came out of latter rain. Yet many people who believed in voice of healing preachers detest the latter rain move. Because men preached and got the revelation of sonship. And the manifestation of the sons of God. I was in Pentecost for nearly half my life before I even heard that verse. The manifestation of the sons of God. And now in classical Pentecostal circles, if you mention that scripture, you can see brake lights going on all over the room. Afraid you'll go too far with it. And I want to tell you we've come to do more than go too far. We've come to park this thing where it belongs. You can stand on Jordan's banks and cast a wish for life you want to. But my God has ripped the veil in twain from top to bottom and has made a way for me to go in at once and possess that. And I will not stand here another 40 years hoping for something to happen. I let my face soar into the heavens tonight and I'll declare we are able to go up at once and possess this land. Hallelujah. How many made up your mind? You're not here to wait. You're not here to mourn. You're not here to try to talk God into it. How many are convinced that it is the will of the Father that you receive the full inheritance? that is due unto you. And I've come tonight to get it all. I didn't come just to get a touch. I feel the glory of the Lord. I didn't come just to feel a little better. I come to leave here healed. I came to leave here blessed. I came here to leave changed. I came here to leave with restoration. I didn't come just for the Lord to lift a little bit of a load. I'm going out of here tonight free from head to foot. Hallelujah. It's the way of escape. Yes. There's a way to escape corruption. There's a way to escape the world and the lust thereof. There's a way to escape burdens. There's a way to escape trials. There's a way to get out of tribulation. There's a way to get out of sorrow. There's a way for the joy of the Lord to flood your soul. He hath made a way of escape. Hallelujah. That way of escape is by the reign of the Spirit. Let me say something real fast. Inject something here. Before I go on, you and I know scientifically that the sun S-U-N has to go to the sea and draw up water out of that sea. And those drops of water form a cloud. And that cloud fills up with rain. Come on, somebody. Could I just spiritualize that for a moment and tell you that the sun S-O-N is right now pulling you up out of the sea of humanity. Somebody say praise the Lord. God, I preach this morning on God wants to inhale us back in to that place we come out of and then exhale us out in this earth to be deliverers who have come up on Mount Zion. Well, I'm telling you now, the Lord is drawing us up out of the realm of the sea of humanity. That sea is stormy. That sea is tossed. That sea is in a toil. That sea right now has got a stormy wind on it and is tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. But there are some people in this hour who are hearing the upward call of the Spirit and God is pulling us up out of that realm of humanity into Himself and we're becoming clouds that are full of the glory and the reign of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And He's getting ready to dump every cloud on this earth at once. Not just former and latter, or latter but former and latter. Both of them is going to come down in one month. Somebody better shout yes, Lord. Uh, woo, I said both of it. It's getting ready 
to fall in the same month. It don't work that way in the natural. You've got to have early rain for the sea, and later on you get a rain for the harvest. But the Lord is putting that time out of the way and pulling it both together, and we're living in an hour where the instant work of the Spirit is taking over. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, some of you come in here tonight, heavy as a weight. But I want you to know by the time you leave this service, every weight, every yoke, every burden, every sickness and disease, every financial difficulty, the Lord will have rolled off of you because the rain of the Spirit is bringing in a supernatural harvest in this hour. We're not talking about a harvest of wheat and a harvest of bread and a harvest of barley. We're talking about a harvest of a supernatural. Come on, somebody. There's a harvest of miracles. There's a harvest of signs and wonders. I hear the Lord saying in Revelation, thrust ye in the sickle. Come on now, for the harvest is ripe. It's time to start gathering. It's to eat up our Shandala Mahaya. Glory to God. And in 48, 49, God raised up Brother Gordon Lindsay, and he raised up William Branham, and he raised up all Roberts. Come on, somebody. Everybody say these were men of God. Don't you never forget that. Those were men chosen by God for that hour and for that day. They couldn't minister in this hour. It ain't their time. They was alive in their time when God ordained them to come forth. And whether we like it or not, folks, they were birthed out of the latter rain movement. Amen. God had to bring in latter rain so the church would open itself up again to the movement of the gifts of the Spirit. Are you hearing me? And in, in the midst of all that, just to name a few highlighted names, there was Brother Roberts, Brother Branham, Brother Jack Cole, Brother A.A. Allen. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother W.V. Grant, Sr. Uh, H. Richard Hall came out of that revival that time. Are you listening to me? Great man of God. Kenneth Hagin ministered in that day. Actually, him, he and Brother Roberts together were special to the Lord because he brought both of them on over into three more movements before he called them home. I just felt the glory of the Lord hit me all over. Hallelujah. Woo! I don't want to be one of them who's able to transition into the new day that God is bringing forth. Some can't transition. They live out their time and when that season changes, they pass on into the heavens and they get a reward and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you right now, I want to be one of those who's able to move on into the next dimension. I don't want to be so narrow-minded that I don't see God is doing a new thing in this earth. Or so healing days were glorious days. Cancers disappeared. Tumors fell off. Gorders disappeared. Brother Old Roberts had an anointing for gorders. My granddad was touched more by his ministry probably than any other ministry that came out of that day. He went many occasions to Tampa, Florida to see Brother Roberts. He told me Brother Roberts could just put his hand out to touch those gorders. And the minute he extended his hand, they'd start jumping like that and phew, just disappear off of there. Now Jack Cole could pray for women who had tumors double the size of their stomach. And he'd have to tell them, catch hold of your skirt before I lay hands on you. Because that thing will disappear. And there they'd gather up their clothes in wads where that tumor had disappeared. Somebody say praise the Lord. And I said, well, uh, what did they believe? I don't know what all. They, they believe, but I don't have time to talk about that because I, until I start seeing women have to grab their clothes because of tumors melting, I don't believe I want to discuss nothing until I minister in that realm of faith Amen. and that realm of the supernatural. Of course, you all know Brother Branham had the gift of the word of knowledge deeper than probably any man that ever walked on the earth. He could tell you your name, address, where you live, social security number, anything God showed him. He could tell you, amen. And, 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 and it's just things. Just, just, just. He raised folks from the dead. Brother Branham raised the dead to life. 
and the last dead person he raised was just a few seconds before he himself. He raised his own wife from the dead. She was killed in the same automobile accident that killed him. And he lived a little, he lived after the impact of the accident for a few moments. And she was killed instantly. And Billy Paul went to the window and, and he said, Billy, what, what about mom? And he said, mom's gone, dad. And he said, no, put my hand. He couldn't even extend his own hand. He was dying. Makes me think of the old prophet's bones. Whoa, I feel the glory. Hallelujah. I wish I could give you just a teaspoon of what I feel running through me right now. He said, take my hand, son, and put it on mom. And they put it on her, and God raised her from the dead. And then Brother Branham folded up his tent and checked out. Somebody say, praise the Lord. What was it? It was restoration. God brought another move to the church. Can you say amen? amen? And then what happened after the voice of healing day? God came forth with the word of, with the charismatic move. Of course, some of my friends don't agree that it was from God, but how silly can one be? Thousands, if not millions of people all over the world were instantly baptized yeah. with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, and, and God raised up women ministries and put them on the forefront through the ministry of Catherine Kuhlman. Oh, thank God for him putting a woman on the world's platform and watching her move. Hallelujah. They say she, sometimes she nearly floated through the air under the glory. Under the high anointing, she could wave one hand and a whole section of people would be slain under the power of God. And those that were in that section who had not had the Holy Ghost would be filled with the Holy Ghost. And cancers were healed. And then that, she didn't lay hands on them to be healed. She called out their healings by word of knowledge. And they were healed all over the building. Can you say amen? Oh, uh, David Duplessy, who they called the father of Pentecost, came into that circle and bridged gaps all over the world. Denominational walls were taken out of the way. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah! My God! And then in the time between that and the word of faith move, God raised up the full gospel businessmen's and all that was was a bunch of doctors and lawyers and plumbers and people who were in the business began to lay hands on the sick. And somebody say amen. God showed us that it didn't just have to be pulpit ministry doing the deliverance. And then of course in the 70s and early 80s, God birthed the Word of Faith move. And of course with the Word of Faith move, He began to teach His people prosperity. Thank God He did. Because most people had the idea about their preacher, God, you keep him humble and we'll keep him poor. But the Lord raised up men all over this earth who began to teach under the uh, the father of that move was Brother Hagin indeed. And then many were born out. Many sons and daughters came out of his spiritual loins and began to teach the word of faith. i got to move on. I'm taking too much time on me. But we had a revival of joy. Yes. How many believe the Lord sent a revival of joy yes. to the church? And how many of you understand that God brought His people on into a kingdom mentality? Yes. Oh, glory to God. Oh, aren't you glad that you found out that God is not wanting to just let you survive here and then take you way on home somewhere and you'll be happy over there. He showed us we can be happy right here. He showed us how to have it right here and now. He taught us authority. He taught us dominion. But all he's been doing, this is what I'm getting at, all he's been getting at himself is he's walking us out of all that darkness and all that religion 
And I, I'm going to tell you something, folks. There ain't but one thing more powerful than the Word of God. And that's traditions. Yes. Amen. The Bible says your traditions have made the Word of no effect. Yes. The only thing more powerful than the Word of God is traditions. But we're taught in Joel's telling us about the rain that when that early and that latter rain begins to fall, he said the floors are going to fill up with wheat. I want you to know, folks, you can give out all the water you want to, and you can get on the street and give out all the cards and candy you want to. But the people that's coming into the church is going to be coming in because of an end time move of the Holy Ghost that draws them in by the power of God. It's not going to take programs and shenanigans to fill up the church. It's going to be a dynamo of God that is moving and falling in that place that is going to draw them by the multitudes. How many of you understand that tonight? My God, now the pre preachers are running ragged trying to get this group happy and that group happy and every group's got its own room and its own program and its own show time and as long as you do that, everybody's happy. You've got to have entertainment now to keep people in. But I'll tell you what, there's an entertainment like you ain't never seen. The Lord's fixing to put on a play like you ain't never seen. He's fixing, whoo, whoo, he's fixing to bring forth a drama such as you never beheld in your life. Somebody say amen. He is getting ready to display the greatest view of the supernatural that has ever been known in the history of mankind's time on this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is an end time worldwide life changing, earth shaking manifestation of the glory and the presence of the most high God. The secret's out. God is here. Hallelujah. The secret's out. Jesus is walking in the midst of his church. The secret is out. He has removed the separation. He has took away everything that's divided us. He is building a house. I said he's building a house. Oh, read a God forever. Hallelujah. 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 For yea, I, the Lord, would say, Be not weary in well doing. Let not thy hands become weak. Let not thy knees become feeble. Yea, saith the Lord, Shake thyself from the dust of this earth round this night. Yea, enlighten thy soul. Yea, cry unto me. Yea, lift up thy face as a flint unto me and unto my presence and my glory this hour. For surely I have chosen thee to enter in to the feast of this hour and to the feast of this day and yea many shall sweep into the gates and they shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied and thou shalt even have portions for whom nothing has been prepared saith the Lord hallelujah Woo, glory to God isn't that what Nehemiah said you're going to have portions for them that nothing's been prepared you're going to see them and say, oh God, how can we handle this? We're not ready for it. But every time you reach in the Spirit and get something else, it's going to replenish. Hallelujah. And there's going to be enough of glory for every man to receive from the presence of the Lord. Everybody say, the floors shall be full of wheat. Now say it like it is today. The churches shall be full of people. Say that again. The church shall be full of people. I'm going to raise your right hand and claim it under the Lord right now. The church shall be filled. Oh, we prophesy for every pastor, for every congregation. In the name of the Lord, we prophesy that the floors are going to fill up with wheat. The churches are going to fill up with people. Old buildings that have been filled with the echo of emptiness are getting ready to have a sound in it. Hallelujah! A sound of rejoicing and a sound of power. Can you say amen, church? And what else did he say? He said in the facts are going to what? Overflow with new wine. 
This is a vintage we've never drunk before. He saved the best wine for these end time folks. Can you say amen? And Benny's on the other end telling us tonight, you better hurry up and pay up. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. God's getting ready to shut the door on you. Yeah. Let me tell you, I read in my Bible where the gate won't be shut day or night. I'm not trying to make nobody mad. I'm just trying to challenge your thinking. For too long, you've let religion do your thinking for you. You need to start getting the mind of the Spirit on this thing and hearing what God is saying. He said there's coming such a peace and a glory he upon this earth that from morning till night they'll be coming in. The gate won't be able to shut it. You won't be able to shut the door 24 hours a day. There'll be a demonstration and a manifestation of the glory of God. Amen. I'll tell you the church will get to the point we'll have to take shifts. We'll have to minister till we wear out and turn it over to somebody who's very capable and able to carry it on. Go on and get a little rest and come back and do it all over again. Somebody say amen tonight because there'll be so many signs and wonders that the people will be coming in day and night wanting to see the glory of the Lord displayed. It won't be church as normal. It won't be your usual average annual Sunday service. It'll be a demonstration, an explosion. My God, hallelujah. I tell you, there's coming a spontaneous combustion of the glory and the power of God in the church. How do you know? Because he said, I'm going to overflow the fat facts. are going to overflow with new wine. Amen. New wine. New wine. New wine. Now, I'll tell you why it is. Because he's trampling the wine press. Oh, couldn't I run a little? Hallelujah. That's what the Bible said. He's going to get in the wine press. You know what the fight is? That, that's that big old place where they get in the wine press and it's got holes and spouts all along it. And, and when they get to tread grapes, you know what happens? Wine starts spilling out. Only this time the Lord said, it ain't going to be just enough. It's going to be more than enough. It's going to overflow with new wine. I feel like the Lord's getting ready to get in the middle of our harvest and start doing some treading. Oh God, I feel the Lord. I said the Lord is getting ready to get in the middle of our harvest and begin to tread. Amen. And when He does, wine is going to flow everywhere. The Bible says in Joel that even the mountains and the hills are going to drop with the what? New wine. Can you say amen? I just tell you folks, I'm not making this up. This is the Word of God. And you need to know what it has to say about revival. Can you say amen? amen? We're not talking about a series of meetings where a preacher brings his own little move in his suitcase. We're talking about a dynamic explosion. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost said we're talking about a dynamic explosion of power and of glory in the church. Can you say amen? amen. I want you to listen to this. This is Joel, the second chapter. Verse 23, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He hath given you the former rain moderately, and He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter, in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and with oil. And when that happens, He said, I will restore unto you the years that the locust and the palmer worm and the caterpillar hath eaten my great army. Hallelujah. He said you'll eat in plenty. I want to tell you there won't be none of this going to church hoping you get a blessing. You better get out of that mess. I said it ain't going to be one of these coming in and hoping the Lord touches you. But the Bible says they're going to eat in plenty. I want to tell you, God not unloose a feast on us. He come a Honda, shun a Mahata, like you've never eat from in your whole spiritual walk. There's going to be signs and wonders on that table. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be gifts and callings. There's going to be anointings and mantles. There's going to be glory to display. Hallelujah! So you can make plans pack up if you want to. But I've just now got unpacked. I'm just getting out my best suit. Oh, I 
I'm talking spiritual now. I just got out my best suit. I know something's coming and I'm getting ready for it. Hey, I know something's getting ready to happen and I am getting ready for it. Amen. I want to tell you I'm preparing the way of the Lord. I'm preparing the way of the Lord. He said, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of you and that I am the Lord your God. Amen. And he said, it will come to pass. Listen to it now. Here is what Peter quoted. It shall come to pass afterward, 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 that I will pour out of my spirit. Come on, somebody. Upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Did he do what he said he would do? And what makes you think you won't fulfill the rest of it? Hallelujah. 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 Because Shanghai. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Come to my soul. Thank you, Father. For I'm not slack concerning my promises as some men count slackness. But I'm long-suffering towards this creation, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. And yea, I have great patience and great expectation in this harvest, saith the Lord thy God. And surely I have groomed it and gleaned it and watched over it and prepared it for this day that is come unto thy door. Even this hour and even this moment, saith the Lord. And you shall now begin to drink of a heavier rain than ye have ever drunk from before. For it shall be a rain of power and a rain of might and a rain of glory and it shall be in floods and it shall come in torrents and it shall run and flood like a river until the river rises and sweeps away all the lies and all the fear and all the doubt and all the unbelief from your midst and in that day I the Lord your God will be mighty in the midst of my people I will show my strong arm I will redeem with my right hand I will uphold thee I will anoint thee I will bless thee I will lift thee up and thou shalt stand with me in the high place of my spirit and shall hear my words and shall know my thoughts and shall do my works, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I got to land this thing. Oh, have you been blessed for the word tonight? I want to take you one more place. And that is uh, to what Elijah experienced on Mount Carmel. Because the Bible says in James, the fifth chapter, is any among you merry, let him sing. Let me teach you something here. Get a hold of it. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Amen. Amen. I don't call you when I'm merry and say, Would you sing for me? I'm happy. I do my own singing. Come on now. And then he said, is any afflicted? Afflicted speaks of tests and trials. How many know the worst thing you can do is tell everybody your business? Amen. you got to trust who you talk to. Amen. And how many know if there's any doubt, keep your mouth shut. Amen. Until the Lord gives you further instructions. But how many know what that next part of that verse says? Is any sick among you? Come on now. Yeah. Now, I know most folks think you said, is any sick among you? Let the church call on them. But that ain't what the word says. It says let them call. You can't be, you can't be sick for, for, for and don't let nobody know it. Then say, well, the preacher never called me. Amen. The Bible said let the sick call. 
Some folks will stay home just to see if a preacher will call them. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many know all that petty stuff's going to wash away in the river? We're not going to have all that babyfied mess in this church of the overcomer. We're going to have mature sons. Let, let, let them call and do what? Anoint them with all. Lay hands on them and do what? Pray the prayer of faith. What will the prayer of faith do? It don't say heal the sick. It says save the sick. Come on now. Sozo. Complete, just what I was preaching about this morning. Complete and total salvation and redemption. God don't just want your spirit right. He wants your soul saved. He don't just want your soul saved. He wants your body redeemed. I submit to you that this place we're in in the kingdom hour of God's supernatural spirit and power, God will bring into being a body salvation. Men's going to quit dying like flies. They're going to quit dropping down and falling dead with diseases because the power of God is going to drive out every infirmity, every sickness, and every disease. Not just the healing, but divine help. Somebody say help. help. All right. What does the next verse say? The effectual fervent prayer of a what? Righteous man availeth much. Then what does the next verse say? Elijah was a man. Subject unto what? Like passions. Like as we are. Now what does that tell you? That tells you that Elijah had the same mess to deal with in his head. That you, how many understand where the war is at tonight? It ain't out there on the battlefield. It's right here. Amen. Amen. It's right here. Amen. It's where all the voices are trying to talk you out of your inheritance in God. But how many know Elijah prayed his way out of that round? Got up in the spirit. And then when he got on Mount Carmel to prophesy, he said, what was his message to him? No, how long do you halt between two opinions? That literally means how long are you going to keep going in circles over the same mess? How long are you going to be? Israel marched 40 years in their own footprints. They met them going and coming. Don't shout me down now. I said they met their own footprints going and coming. How many is tired of seeing your own footprints? How many is ready to make some new footprints on some new town? I don't know if it helped you or not, but I preach my soul shouting happy tonight. I believe God's going to let me walk on some new places and some new territory. Amen. And, 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 and then he said, if, if God be God, fine. If Baal be God, fine. But let's prove it right now. How many believe God's raising up a ministry in this hour that is going to throw down that mantle like Elijah did to say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? We're getting ready to see a divine manifestation. That's why God's preaching to us the way He is. He's opening our faith and our soul up to receive this stuff. And so what does He do? He, he, he prays and then He says, what does He hear in the Spirit? He hears the sound of an abundance of rain. And what does he tell? Does he just keep that to himself and write himself a little note and say, I hope I remember this tomorrow? No. He turns around and tells the leader of all of Israel, you better get up and eat and drink. You better get home. You better get moving. Because something's fixing to move on top of this mountain. Oh my God. And so Ahab starts leaving in a chariot now, mind you. And Elijah's left with a servant. And the servant becomes his what? Eyes. But he's got to have a certain type of eyesight because what he's getting ready to see, you've got to see through the invisible. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 So what does Elijah do? He gets into birthing position. He gets on the ground and puts his head between his knees. That means he grabs his knees. Get what is that? His top of that's the top of giving birth to the supernatural. And he prays the prayer. When he gets done praying the prayer, he tells the servant, "Go see something. Go look." He comes back and says, "I ain't seen it yet." What did he tell him to do? Get out there and go again. How many of you have been a hundred times and I ain't seen nothing? Well, I've come to tell you tonight, go back and look again. Top I shall have my hand my hand. 
I said, I came here tonight to tell you to go back and look again. I come to bring you a message from heaven. That heaven sees something you ain't seen yet. And until you start seeing what heaven sees, you're not going to have a manifestation of it. How many times did it take him to look to see it? Seven. What did he see? He saw a cloud. What was the cloud coming up out of the sea? Now I've come to preach to you tonight that I understand that in Elijah's day, in the natural, there came a natural rain that flooded that dry ground. But I've also come to tell you that which is second is always spiritual. And he seen more than just a cumulus or a strato cloud rising up in the sky. He saw a people coming up out of that realm of humanity. Are you listening? Because that cloud wasn't like a normal cloud. It looked like a man's hand. Somebody say praise the Lord. How many believe that hand ministry right now God is putting an anointing on the like he never has before. Apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Hallelujah! And how many of you believe that God has drawn them up and drawn us up into the high realm of the Spirit and filled us with His glory and we're getting ready to have a ministry glory to God that is going to be able to pour water upon the dry and the barren ground. Amen! What happened after that hand rose up? Did it stay just a hand ministry? No. The whole heavens got black with clouds. How many believe that's a sign that the body is coming in? Glory to God. It ain't just going to be a one man show. It's not just going to be pulpit ministry. It's not just going to be all this uh, ecclesiastical order. It's going to be a manifestation of the glory so thick, so powerful, and so widespread that it's going to cover the whole earth. Oh my God. How is it going to cover it? As the waters cover the sea. Would you raise your hands and thank God tonight all over the world the Spirit is moving all over the world like the prophet said it would be all over the world there's a mighty revelation of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea and down deep in my heart, the Spirit is moving. Down deep in my heart, like the prophet said it would be. Down deep in my heart, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the water cover the sea. Hallelujah. Stand up everybody and let's sing it a little bit tonight. Hallelujah. All over this world the Spirit is moving. All over this world like the prophet said it would be. That if you had been appointed to this feast, you couldn't sit here and listen to what you've listened to tonight. Most people who are not called to this feast can hear what I've just said to you and don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But those that the Lord has chosen in this hour can hear something. And I'm telling you, nothing is going to stop the coming force of this thing in your life. I'm prophesying that to you tonight. I prophesy to the both of you nothing is going to be able to stop the glory from 
from his voice. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what it feels like. There's nothing going to stop the manifestation of the glory of the Lord. It's bigger than anything. And that restoration of years is yours to lay hold of because you've got years of work to do to make up for years of sorrow. But the Lord is going to restore everything that the canker worm and the caterpillar have eaten and have taken away. It may look like it's gone today, but there's coming a day when it will not look like it's gone for the Lord will begin to put back, say of God, that which has been taken, that which has been robbed will have to be given back. I hear the Lord say that verse in the Old Testament, if a thief be called, let him restore seven times what he has stole. And I claim sevenfold restoration in every area of your lives tonight. And I believe in God to sweep your home with a revival and to sweep your life with a move of God that is so real that He wipes away every bit of turmoil and sorrow and pain and brings the joy of the Lord which is your strength. And I reach down in your spirit and stir up that supernatural joy right now. And I declare it's running over and overflowing and God is flooding and God is moving and God is decreeing over you tonight in Jesus mighty name hallelujah oh my God how many know you're chosen for such a time as this uh, how many has cried long enough uh, how many has argued long enough uh, how many has tried to fight it long enough you're just going to give way to the current and to the flow of the supernatural and let the Lord lift you up tonight hallelujah well, everybody just come around that way and receive a double portion of the anointing of God tonight in the name of Jesus. And it's already on you people. I see the glory. I see the glory. I see the glory. The glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus.
years work. Years work. God's doing a new thing. <laughs> Praises to the Lamb 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Arasoko Rianda Ramoshe, Ralabayanda Ralabaya. He that had already owned Rosto, Ralaboya, Mamma Mahoya, Mahataya, Ralaba. Glory to God, 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 hallelujah, 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 glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. That's why we tell you all the time, say yes before he ever asks a question. Just go on and tell him yes. No, let him know ahead of time, you want in on this thing. What? Hallelujah. Our uh, brother Barney used to. Everybody used to come to brother Barney and say, "Tell us, brother Barney, what the end time church will look like." He said, "I don't know, but I can tell you this: it'll look like him. It'll look like him. It'll look like him. It'll look like him." Some people are so busy trying to figure out all the details. Kenny Fagan used to say you're so busy hunting the spectacular, you miss the supernatural. We're not called to work out the details. I'm not even called to preach details unless the Spirit supernaturally gives me a particular uh, a view into it. The main thing we're here for is to announce that a new day's arrived. A new day's arrived. Can you say amen? When the heavens, they traveled the whole world with no details. They never had no details. They just had a little word and knew they were supposed to go a certain place. The Lord worked out all the details when they got there. Can you say praise the Lord? And I can tell you tonight, God's got all the details covered. You just show up. Show up. Show up. Amen. And get counted. And He'll work the rest out. He'll work the rest out. I'm convinced we, we, not He, we, are loading ourselves down way much more than we have to. We are burdening our own selves. We're feeling guilty and liable for things we should never feel liable or guilty about. It's His church. He said, cast that care. Oh, come on, I'm shy. Roll it over. Roll it over. Roll it over. Sometimes the old guilt will scream at us, you better not do that. Especially when you're trying to, you know, but you got to do it. You got to roll it off. Because the truth is, you can't hear from God to help nobody. Hallelujah. When you're so cumbered about and so tied up. But Lord, the way He's talked today, we ought to be the loosest bunch on the block. Amen. Because God has summoned us to a place in Him today where we truly, yes, go ahead. <coughs> Yes, that's right. Not many people know. That's right.
I've, I've had you all to come up when they found it. Between then and <laughs> between the next test, whatever they found disappeared. Ham had that done. Sister Sue. Oh yes, they called her. They found it and called her back. And between then and and the next visit, God melted that thing out of there and it weren't there no more. Somebody say praise the Lord. I got a chance to back to the doctor that ordered my regular doctor. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. And little Tyler, a little old bitty thing, what is he, four? About four years old. And I was in preaching, standing in that aisle right there, preaching under the anointing. And Isla came through that door, and I knew when she did, you can hear me, can't you? I brought that thing about all the Pray they took Tyler to the emergency room and they he tested for meningitis, positive for meningitis. Let me tell you, we touched the Lord. And by the time I dismissed the service and got my clothes changed and drove out to that hospital, they have a sign of release for us. For him, that's how fast God that fever was gone. I mean, the Lord dropped, just cooled his brow like that. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he just sitting in this atmosphere where he was just sitting in this atmosphere. You know, when Sister when, uh, Linda that lived up the road, she started bringing her mother to church. And she was in her 80s, and she had a diabetic sore, big old sore on her foot, and it had been there six months and a half and to my knowledge, nobody knew about the sword, and nobody ever prayed specifically for that sword. But all of a sudden, every time they went to take in them dressing off, it was filled in more and more till the thing completely healed up. She was taking brokerage shots every week because of her blood platelets falling, and she had uh, three leukemia cells and she was part of blood. And every time she was going to get her blood checked, it was higher and higher and higher. And finally, the doctor come out and said, don't bring her back for a year. I said, uh, every time y'all coming over here for nothing. I said, I'm checking her, and she don't need no shots. Said, if she ain't needing none now, she probably won't never need another. Until the day she passed away, she never had another shot. So God, just, just, just you being around his presence, his word. We'll it'll take care of you, it'll heal you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Bless you tonight. We love you. In the name of the Lord.